beautiful music. Pretty. That's Caitlin Mertens, who has been playing the harp for us. Very nice. Thank you, Caitlin. Now, earlier in the show, we talked about the importance of celebrating love, not only just on Valentine's Day, but how to make the romance last throughout the entire year. So joining us again are marriage and family therapist, Dr. Viviana Coles, and certified sex therapist, Emily De Ayala, to share the recipe of how to keep the sizzle in your love life. It means we're talking sex. I'm uncomfortable already. <laughs> No, oh, but seriously, dear. you know, I mean, you hear so often that sex only goes for a couple of days a year for a lot of folks. You know, what you said the ABCs to me backstage, which yeah. is anniversary, birthday, and Christmas. <laughs> so how do you get it more than just those three days? I mean, I think we were talking in the last segment that sex is usually better the more often you have it. It's just like practicing any skill. The more so it's like, babe, we got to practice. You do. <laughs> I mean, the more the more you practice, the more often do you do it, and the more emotionally connected you are to your partner, um, the more in sync you become. And you mean like with the same person? <laughs> Again, I, I totally kidding, guys. Totally you can. Kidding. I mean, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Monogamy does not have to be monotonous. Wait, is that true? I mean, based on the couples you see in your practice, uh, it's true that people are really just having sex three times a year: well, anniversary, birthday, Christmas. You have to remember well, when people come to see us, it's not stuff that they're not looking for Cosmo advice. I mean, this is really, really serious, and mm -hmm. they're oftentimes on the breaking point. So, what we try to help them to do is create these emotional connections, and that needs to be happening nearly on a daily basis. Oftentimes, work keeps you separated a lot of the day, mm -hmm. so you know, taking 20 minutes out at the beginning or at the end of the day to connect emotionally is going to set you up for really good foreplay and then really good sexual experiences. Ladies, earlier you touched on the idea of speaking the language of love, no. your partner's love language. So first yeah. of all, what's a love language? How do you find out what your partner's love language is? And how do you actually love them in the way they need to be loved? Right, so the, the Five Love Languages is a really popular book that came out several years ago, I think. Um, and the author identifies five distinct love languages. They are spending quality time, words of affirmation, so saying I love you, you're so meaningful to me, that sort of thing. Giving gifts, um, and that does not have to be mean big extravagant gifts, it can be little things too. Physical affection, which may or may not include sex, it can be cuddling on the couch. And then finally, acts of service, so that's like, you know, honey, you put your feet up, I'll take care of the dishes tonight. So doing nice things to, for your partner. And Dr. Gary Chapman has a great website, <laughs> fivelovelanguages.com, where you can go online and take a quick quiz, or you can just pick up the book in any bookstore. It's in hundreds of languages. Mm -hmm. And it's a really, I, I've, I find it really game changing for a lot of couples. Once you find out what language to speak to your partner, all you have to do is put your energy into doing that. Mm -hmm every once in a while, throughout the day, throughout the week. And if you put your effort into that, your, your partner's going to feel so loved. But all five of those things sound nice to me. I know. I, I feel like going, I yeah, so high you on should, all of them. You'll appreciate all of them. I like to say that it's kind of like having the target versus having the bullseye. So you get the whole dartboard, and anytime somebody does that, you're going to appreciate it. But the bullseye, it's going to be that one primary. Okay, but if you want to hit that point. bullseye, how do you get there? Okay, so I think a lot of times, <laughs> I know the bullseye you're talking yeah. about. Okay, so a Where lot of you, times, you know, you, how, when do you discuss what you want that's going to get you there? Okay, so once you're, once you're speaking each other's love languages, you're feeling connected, then it's about trying to figure out how to initiate sexual activity with your partner. And that might be different for everyone. I'm telling you, I've had people who come into my office and tell me that they initiate sex by using a term like, hey, do you want some butt? That is not sexy. What? It's a turn off and it yeah. Hey, do you want some what? <laughs> I mean, I think there are different ways to initiate sex. So, you know, I think you have to talk to your partner about what kind of cues they're more likely to be receptive to and pay attention to maybe when they're not receptive versus when they are. So sometimes it's more of a playful initiation, like, hey, do you want to, you know, hop in the sheets later? That's kind of a playful. Sometimes yes. it's a bit more seductive. Maybe a, you know, sweet kiss turns into kind of a makeout session. It's that physical, um, you know, connection that... Yeah that leads to initiating but sex. But oftentimes, and this is for the men out there, oftentimes there's just a little 
grab on the bottom mm -hmm. or a little brushing up against their partner. And unfortunately, their partners are usually doing something like washing dishes, yeah. something that they don't want to do. They're not in a sexy headspace. And so now they equate that action and their mm -hmm. partner with a turn off, unsexy, no fly zone. So it's not even necessarily verbal. It could be just a mm -hmm. gentle little mm -hmm. subtle it can. touch. And, and I think you kind of hit on an important point, and that is that pleasure is context dependent. So if we are, you know, if we've been running a thousand miles a minute all day long and we're exhausted or we're stressed out or the relationship isn't, a, isn't in a good place and your partner comes over to you and gives you a little pat on the butt, you're going to want to turn around and maybe sock them in the <laughs> eye. Whereas if you're feeling relaxed, emotionally connected, the kids, you know, are, in the kids are in bed and they come over and give you the same exact little pat on the butt, you may have a completely different, different reaction. reaction. But I find that a lot of men will do that by they'll take the temperature of whether or not their partners are in that great sexy headspace by doing mm -hmm. something that reminds them of like sophomore year of high school. Yeah. And that's just not sexy. We got to leave it there. Dr. Viviana Coles, Emily de Ayala, thank you so much I for like coming. the sexy headspace though. We always feel so <laughs> uncomfortable when you're here. <laughs> just kidding. To keep up with our relationship experts, you guys can visit TexasRelationshipTherapy.com and ReviveTherapy.com. You can also check out Emily and Dr. Coles on YouTube and Facebook. And both ladies will be back every day this week to continue our not uncomfortable discussion <laughs> about love. And it's